Hello and welcome to a tech talk around VMware Cloud Foundation, NSXT and Cisco ACI multi-site fabric. Before we get started, a quick word about our audience and our agenda today. This tech talk is a level 200 tech talk and it's aimed at architects and engineers, predominantly those who have encountered ACI and have experience around VCF. I'm gonna not really talk about um, the explanation for the terminology used to describe the components that go into VCF, NSX, and ACI, I will expect you to know them. What we'll do is as a part of the agenda is describe the building blocks and some of the associated design and architectural considerations that go into them. Then we'll go on to describe where the building blocks and, and their respective architectures sometimes have conflicting requirements and ultimately how we've actually worked our way around addressing those conflicts. Um, so a little bit about me. Who am I? My name is Savin Delo. I've um, been a network architect, a network infrastructure, network, network infrastructure architect, architect now, I should say, for about 20 years. Built networks of LAN, DC, WAN, service provider. What, what does that mean? I'm actually quite long in the tooth. Uh, been a VCDX in network virtualization for about seven years now. Um, these days, I spend a lot of my time consulting with some of our larger customers, and we talk much about overlay networking, underlay networking, and automation of DC networks. So that's me. Um, all right, and now we'll get into the bones of today's tech talk. And we'll start with the components. So this is a tech talk that's centered around Cloud Foundation version four. Um, as you know, NSX Data Center 3 is part of that bill of materials, and ultimately also the ACI fabric, the multi-site underlying fabric. Now, if we go back to the VCF4 components, um, in VCF4, we have a need sometimes to talk about uh, infrastructure level resilience with our customers. For those customers that don't have application resilient um, workloads. And for that, in VCF4, we talk about the need for stretch clusters. So we provide a stretch cluster in VCF, and also then you know, we might also need um, site-specific clusters. And we'll talk about that further on. NSXT in the context of VCF4 is a very prescribed architecture. In order to instantiate it through Cloud Builder, you do need to follow the rules. And that's kind of the crux of the matter in that when you try to integrate that. Cisco multi-site is a very robust networking fabric. It works well with, it's got two separate AZs um, and you try to, you cross connect them with the control plane. If you think about NSX and NSX Federation, it's kind of a similar thing. They have two separate um, ACI fabrics and they connect them over the top using Cisco multi-site fabric and MSO. Now, if we talk about the actual conflicts now going on, the problem, as it were. Well, ACI in a multi-site fabric, what that needs is that requires you to have this follow their architectural principle. Their architectural principle state you shouldn't cross site peer, i.e. if you've got an external L3 out peering from your ACI on AZ1, you should only peer to devices in AZ1. The issues with multi-site fabric and VCF is that the VCF design, when you want high availability with stretch clusters, implies BGP peerings that go across site. And that is not something that ACI multi-site fabric can do. So here's the key takeaway at this point. If you've got multi-site fabrics from Cisco and you need to do high availability with shared edge stretch compute clusters for NSX, you need to come up with a workaround as we did. Now, if I show you a picture of that, what that actually really looks like, if you look at this picture, this is the management domain in a VCF4 build. And as you can see, you've got your typical stretch cluster, primary half and a secondary half across the AZs, and you've got your edge VMs and your T0 router here, uh, sitting above the primary vSAN nodes, and they're trying to peer. What you can't do is that. And the reason for that is because cross-site L3 outs aren't allowed. That's what we're discussing here and how to work around it. And now I'll switch to showing you through a light board, drawing some components on the wall on the board and you can see what we do to address that problem.
Right, so now I'll switch the board and hopefully you can see me. Okay, and I'm gonna start drawing a few components here in front of you to give you an idea of what it is. We'll start with a compute node, which would be in AZ1, and this is our vSAN cluster. We'll have another vSAN cluster, which will actually be a stretched one in AZ1, and stretching to AZ2. And then finally, we have another node here, which is a vSAN cluster, rather, which is AZ2. Okay, nothing unusual about that. On top of that, we'll have our T0 routers. And in our case, for this particular customer, we had a number of them. So, and these are all virtual machines. So VM, VM, and then another one here, VM, VM. And finally, we had one for AZ2. So if you think about it, site specific, and also one that works across the stretch. And all of that was obviously configured inside our workload domain. Let me put that there. Now we have on the side here, we obviously have our management domain. And we have our NSX cluster of managers here, like that, which is managing this instance. Across the top, we have our ACI fabrics. So in here, we have the AZ1 ACI fabric with a couple of routers, and that's AZ1. And then we have the same in AZ2. And again, a couple of border routers. Now, this is the limit and of what we can configure. This design is approved by the VCF or the HCIBU and we can't add to it. And this is the limit, this is the architectural constraint, if you like, of ACI, and we're still within it. So what did we actually introduce to fix this? Well, we introduced a new provider tier of networking. So here, in this box here, we've got another T0 router, this time on bare metal edges, BMEs. And another one here, again, on BMEs. Now, that is managed completely outside of VCF and SDVC manager. We introduce a new NSX manager component, let's call it provider, and that manages these components. These are strictly transit devices for routing and steering traffic. And the reason it works is that, switching to a different pen for the peerings, these peerings here, from the T0 to ACI, are a type of peering known in, which is conducted over something called an L3 out in, B, in ACI. And that is a site-specific peering, therefore supported. And it's the same on this side, L3 out and also supported. Now, to peer to our ACI fabric, right, so from our, B of our provider tier to our VCF T0s, we use a different component here in the middle. And that is called an L2 EPG. I'm not, as I said before, I'm not gonna explain the terminology, but an L2 EPG is supported as a stretched transport mechanism. So now we can pair to our stretch router like this. And obviously we've got our site specifics going up to our, only our site specifics. And that is a supported technology from NSXBU, NSBU and also the HCRBU. So you can build this. What you have to consider is maybe sometimes things around asymmetric routing. So in this, in this topology, traffic can come in from either site, AZ1 or AZ2, arrive down these paths and arrive at the edge VMs inside of the workload domain. And you may not want that. Our customers in the past have not, because they tend to have firewalls here at the boundary, up here and up here. 
And if they have those firewalls, they don't want to see asymmetric routing. So what you have to do is some traffic engineering. The consideration there, because these are all separate AS numbers, is to use AS path across the secondary peering site, if it is indeed AZ2, both ways to a prepend. So as you inject the default, it's not preferred. And as you advertise your prefixes, they are not preferred by AZ2. And you can obviously flip this topology and add an extra set of edge VMs here and have some other routes that are coming in on the AZ from the other side. So you can do load balancing in a deterministic manner as opposed to ECMP. And that's kind of what you have to consider. There are some other considerations in all this in that you must, that because these nodes all sit outside of SDDC Manager, as do these BMEs, you've got to lifecycle manage these yourself. Password rotation will not happen. And I guess that's my time up really with this light board session. And we'll go back now to um, the slides and I'll show you a much cleaner version of this picture that I made earlier. So if we go on, you can see here the introduction of the provider layer as per the diagrams I showed you. And then you can see here the peering is now permitted because we are doing it over ACI, as ACI is not participating in the peering. And that is pretty much it. I've got some top tips for you here in the slides. I'm kind of running out of time, but so you'll have to read them for yourselves, pause it. And finally, if you do have any questions, hit me up at savindalala.computerset.com and thank you for watching.